Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the uh, Gadget Show. Live from here in the NEC, I'm bringing you the Gadget Show Invitational 5,000 pound StarCraft II tournament brought to you by Alienware. Currently sitting in the uh, game zone right now, which is of course sorted out by the one and only game. And it's looking absolutely fantastic right now. It really, really is absolutely awesome. Whatever the case, also thanks to Heaven Media for bringing you this and Quad V for providing the streaming and production. We're going to be going into a game right now between Sokke and Bling. We just saw Bling defeated by his teammate Sho. The question is, can he hold up better in a PvP environment versus the mighty Sokke, who has actually been defeated in a PvP by Hazelwobs in this particular group stage tournament. So that's quite intriguing. Sokka usually with a very strong Protoss v Protoss style. However, Hazelwobs really did bring the pain and there wasn't an awful lot that Sokka could do. He seemed to be on the ropes most of the time. We'll see as to whether or not he can actually pull back from that. Find out whether or not our players are ready to get started and we'll get kicked off as quickly as possible. This is going to be on the uh, Terminus. Yeah, this is the... Uh, GSTL version of Terminus SE will be ready to go in one to two minutes time. In the meantime, I suppose I can tell you a little bit about Bling. Those of you who don't know who Bling is, Bling is the newest addition to Team Dignitas, and he was chosen via the gamer search that took part. Uh, he took part in a LAN event down at the gamer base in the heart of London. It was an eight-player event done after various online qualifiers, and at the end, the master of Dignitas. Some people like to call him. That's certainly what he likes to be called as to whether or not his team players actually call him that. Yeah, I don't know. A little bit debatable. Well, words I can't really repeat on the air. But whatever the case, OD decided to choose him out of the eight players. Really because, one, he also won the tournament. And two, he just looked so incredibly dominant. I think the only guy on his level really anywhere close to it was actually a player called Lau. And Lau actually lost to Bling in a very convincing fashion. So Bling, a great player. The newest addition to Team Dignitas. However, this is probably the first tournament he's really played in against these big international players in a LAN environment. So this this is very different for him, and it's certainly a learning experience. It's the kind of thing that you have to do if you're going to be a pro gamer. You've got to be prepared to deal with things in a first-person sort of area. Online is not the same, folks. It really, really is not. There's an awful lot more factors you have to bear in mind, including the fact that you've got actually spectators in the audience around you. We're going right into the game right now, folks. You can hear this uh, countdown to destruction. And here we go right now on the GSTL Terminus SE Protoss v Protoss matchup, Sokke versus Bling from Team Dignitas. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Terminus SE. My name is Total Biscuit, bringing you all the action right now between Sokke in the uh, light blue trunks. He is playing Protoss versus his opponent Bling from Team Dignitas, also playing Protoss, and he is in the orange trunks over to the west of the map right here. This could be intriguing, ladies and gentlemen. I am interested to see just how well Bling's PvP style holds up against Sokke, who has lost one PvP already, but was showing absolutely no signs of his confidence being not Sokke, an incredibly confident player, and a very, very good one as well, with a lot of tournament wins under his belt. I'm talking about live tournaments as well. I'm not talking about doing a LAN or anything like that. It is live tournaments. He is very, very experienced in that regard. So. That will certainly help him an awful lot in this particular tournament. Sokke, his PvP style is varied. That's the cool thing about it. He likes to do all sorts of different things, and it's interesting to watch. He's got a lot of strategies against four gating, for instance, and we'll have to see if Bling decides to go for the four gateway. He very well might, honestly, considering he is certainly losing games in the group stages. Now, bearing in mind that the group stages is only for seeding right now. All of the players will be going through, and I believe the top winners will actually get a bye only through the first round, so they will stay in the winner's bracket of this double elimination, whereas some of the others will, of course, be knocked down, I would imagine, considering the setup that there'll be two matches and it'll be in a best-of-three format, whereby a couple of those players are going to go down to the loser's bracket. It's not a very large tournament in terms of the number of players here. We actually had a couple of players that unfortunately were not able to attend, including Insolence and Goody and Orc as well. And we have in our roster, we've got Naniwan, we've got Sho, we've got Select, we've got Bling, we have Sokke, and we have Hazuob. So we're looking at four Protoss and two Terran. No Zerg in this tournament, I'm afraid, because no Grim was unable to make it due to illness. So that's kind of upsetting, but nonetheless, we have two extremely competent Terran players. We're talking about Select and Sho, two of the best Terran in the world, so I would certainly not be worried for their survivability in this particular tournament. 
Bling on the way out for a scout, as is Soke. Soke will uh, find him first, no real doubt about that. And let's see if Bling decides to go for that four gateway aggression against Soke, and can Soke actually handle it? It depends on the map, really. We've seen some great comebacks from exceptional four gateway aggression. The four gate of Atero, for instance, very, very powerful. And Soke lost two matches to him in a best of five series to that four gate before turning it around on a map called Aya Garden, which has a rear expansion, and then coming out with all sorts of crazy stuff, including including a sentry hold-off strategy transition into a three-gateway Twilight Council Blink Stalker combo. Which sounds really complicated, but it really isn't. It's like, well, hold it at the ramp for as long as possible until I get Blink Stalkers, and then my superior micromanager will come into play. Blink has two gateways. Will he build a third? We're about to find out. Yes, he will. It is a four gateway strategy right now from Blink. A single assimilate up. Soke will no doubt be scouting for this, keeping an eye on things, taking control of those towers. Snipes off a probe as well. Nice play there by him. No proxy pylon for you for the time being. Of course, an early proxy pylon would have been advantageous, but it is not the end of the world. And also, you'll find that Blink should be able to deny the scout unless he misses it. And that's exactly what's going to be happening. Oh, Soke, Soke, you sneaky individual. He is all the way in, and he's going to scout that four gateway. A critical error by Bling right there. And now Soke will be able to prepare for what he knows is coming. He's going to be four gating himself, ladies and gentlemen. And Soke's four gate, while we rarely see it, is extremely potent. Every now and again, he will throw that down. He should be able to deny the probe placing the proxy pile on, keep an eye on things, make sure that no kind of nonsense comes his way. And if that's the case, I'd be very worried for Blink. Blink's going to have to go very forward right now. He's going to have to start pushing, getting aggressive, securing a position where he can deploy, and Soke four gateway into Twilight Council. Yes, indeed, this is an interesting adaptation of his previous strategy. So he's got two options right now. He can either go in with the four gate. The thing is, he's got two assimilators, so it's more likely I would expect to see a hold off into Blink Stalkers, and then he'll allow his superior micromanagement to come into play. And also, Blink is going for Twilight Council right now, so I think Blink already knows that considering the scouting that his four gateway will fail if he attempts to try and pull this off. Driving the Stalker of Soke all the way across the map. Soke still keeping an eye on things though and no easy pylons for Bling. Here's the probe. Here's the deployment. How much aggression will be able to come in? Uh, it's not all that close, really. It's not as close as it really should be. Can't attack from that angle. It's going to have to go all the way around the side. There was even sniping opportunities from this corner right here for Soke Stalker. So I'm not seeing that as an ideal situation. And we do have Blink on the way for Soke. He doesn't have it right now, but he's got a good 20-second lead on his opponent. And Blink will probably try a little bit of early aggression. Uh, we'll see what he can actually do with that. He does have six Stalker, two Zealot. But the thing is, he's against a Sentry and five Stalker. That's a foregone conclusion in favor of Soke. Should be able to nail him down very easily. And I'm not entirely convinced by Bling's aggression right now. And also the fact that Soke is going to gain an economic advantage over his opponent if Bling continues to warp in and tries to make a push here. Because I don't think he's going to be able to do anything with it. Soke already prepared for that option, assuming that it does come in. Bling is going to go for it. He doesn't really have a choice in the matter. He's warped in so many at the front already. He's got that proxy pile on up. He's got nine Stalker and two Zealot. It's still, it's not enough. It really, really is not. Soke will be able to deal with them very easily. And a scout coming out as well. Soke sees it coming in already. He knows the aggression is on the way. And Soke looking to get good positioning right now. And that Guardian Shield is going to make such a huge difference to this fight. It's just not going to happen. And Blink is already available right now for Soke. Also now available for Blink as well. How much damage do you do? He actually nails down two Stalkers. Very nice play there by Blink. However, an aggressive Blink in by Soke. Nails down a lot. That looks for a second right here. It's still good. And Soke doesn't actually have the numbers right now. However, it's going to come down to micromanagement. How good is it going to be? Blink drives him away. However, minimal losses right now for Soke. Soke known as the most efficient player in terms of Protoss play that I've ever seen, honestly. German efficiency from him. Very, very good play. Right now, we're looking at 11 Stalker versus 10 Stalker. 11 Stalker are now available for Soke. And a push right here from Blink could prove to be costly. I wouldn't really want to risk that right now. Sentry are available for Soke as well. Doesn't really have the energy to do anything with it, but he certainly will in the next 10 seconds or so. And once that happens, then Bling is going to run into a world of pain. That's what's coming his way. And bear in mind that the four gateway attacker Bling is starting to peter out right now. You can't really support four gates on one base. It just can't really be done. You can't continue to pump units out that way, especially if you're going to lose them to Soke. If we have a look at units loss comparison, units kill is it's pretty equal in terms of 
the numbers, it, there's only really one unit in it, so I wouldn't really call it a whitewash on either way. Once again, Sokke pushing forward, keeping an eye on things, making sure that nothing goes on over there, nothing untoward. Bling just kind of sitting there. I mean, he's got map control. I'm surprised he doesn't really do anything with it. There we go. Robotics facility on its way. I'm surprised not to see an expansion behind this. He certainly is going to have the money very soon to do just that. Almost, almost picks off a stalker. Drawn into a trap right here. Bling with a quick blinker, and the cooldown is right on. And Sokke actually has the numbers advantage right now. Plus, Guardian Shield is now. It's going to be able to push him all the way back. Bling getting the hell out of there, and advisably so. And a pylon down immediately. Well, 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 that's problematic. And Sokke now with the map control, and he has the upper hand. He's got the numbers that he needs, and no expansion for Bling either. Immortals, perhaps? No Immortals coming out right now. Would be nice to get an Immortal in that mix. That would actually throw the balance off. However, Sokke is looking very strong right now, sitting on at 5 Zealot 17 Stalker. Doesn't have any upgrades aside from Blink, but he does have the numbers advantage, and he also has the micromanagement advantage. He's a very efficient player. Stalker quickly uh, scouts at the ramp, sees exactly what he's up against. Will he go for the charge? He looks like he's going to do just that. He has the Zealot count to do it, and of course he's sitting on that natural expansion, so I wouldn't be remotely surprised to see Sokke try and expand behind that. Proxy Pile are not really in place for him. He does have one over there, but that's all the way over there, and that's not really in reinforcement range. Sokke certainly has the money, but he's not going to bother right now. More warpins and a robotics facility on the way out. No mortals right now for Blink, and the economy of Sokke still slightly ahead. I am very worried that these players are going to start mining out right now. One of them's going to have to expand, and honestly, they don't want to do anything of the sort because they're pretty evenly matched right now in terms of unit count. In fact, their army supply count is almost equal. Blink slightly behind, but not by a huge amount. Sokke will be able to push an advantage shortly, but he's not willing to go in yet. Keep an eye on things, folks. Things are about to get very interesting. Bling uh, moving his way across the map, but if he actually gets caught out here, this could be devastating for him. He's got another warp in coming in. However, that is way behind the line. Does take control of the Zelnaga watch now. He sees what's coming in and nails down a stalker. Very nice play there by him. And Sokke looking to defend against this. Is it going to be good enough? We're going to find out. Immediately blink out there. And that is really not a good idea. Because if you blink out immediately, Sokke will follow it up and he'll nail down a couple of stalkers for free, which is not what you want unless you're trying to draw them out. And honestly, he's taking a lot of firepower. Another blink, snipes off another stalker, and now blink on the back foot. Not what you want at all. Pushed all the way back once again, and Sokke finally designed to expand behind that push. I don't really blame him at all. He does have the advantage. He's got the upper hand. He's got the map control. He's got control of a few Zellnaga watchtowers. He knows exactly what he's doing. And once again, pushing in, and Blake trying to micromanage away from that. It's not going to happen now. However, Sokke with a quick blink out there is good stuff. And this is just a salvo after salvo. We're looking at some Napoleonic era warfare going on right here. The muskets are out, and violence is what you can expect. Bling, however, is on the back foot right now. Down to 30 stalkers versus 21. Sokke will take him apart in this situation, unless he's able to get a very quick warp in. Reinforcements coming in. He doesn't have a sentry to block it off. Sokke could go in here. He could finish him off, but he's not going to do that right now. Not confident of his numbers. And, of course, he doesn't have any scouting information. In the meantime, Blink's actually snuck past him right now. And the question is, will he be able to get caught? Sokke must have seen that one. Yes, he has, with the control of the Zelnaga watchout. Blink is moving out. And, actually, all the defense of Blink is gone. If we were to get into a base race scenario right now, then Blink would lose it, considering he only has one base. Blink is looking to do major damage right now. The question is, will he be able to do that. I'll start raining it down right now on the pile. Down it goes. And the Nexus under great threat. Looking to try and push his way up the ramp. However, Sokke is ready to deal with it. Quick blink away and blink caught out completely out of position. This could be unpleasant. The question is, will Sokke be able to flank him right now? It doesn't look like it's going to happen. Uh, Bling very easily able to uh, jump out of that. Doesn't lose too many stalkers. I wouldn't be too worried for him right now. Oh, free sentry. Free sentry. The best kind of sentry. However, Sokke with aggressive blink in. Nails down a couple more stalkers and looking for a counterattack. And this time, he really does have the numbers to make this happen. He really, really does. 27 stalkers versus 18. And three zealots in the mix as well. Plus, of course, the fact that I'd say that Sokke's micromanagement probably a lot better than Blink's. Army supply is massively in favor. There's a quick blink and almost takes a stalker out. But Bling is very quick on his feet right now. Sokke continues to push forward and it's looking a little bit grim right now for our bling, I'm afraid. One down, good target fire, takes down the Zealot as well. Nails down those weak stalkers. Excellent, excellent target firing right now by Sokke. Sokke, the efficient German player, doing incredibly well. Look at that, blinking them out of the line and he sees Micromanager just a little bit better than Blink. Blink is melting, GG, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. And Sokke able to deal with Bling in fine, fine style right there. Excellent, excellent play by him. 
Well, to be honest, it was kind of a foregone conclusion. If you're going to get into a stalker at war with Sokka, then you better damn well be prepared to do just that. And honestly, he just wasn't. He really, really was not ready to do it. He was behind pretty much the entire game. Moving out there was a bold move, but it didn't really do the job. It wasn't really what he was looking for. He was not able to gain an economic upper hand. And of course, Sokka had already expanded, so he had the economic advantage backing him up there as well. And when you do get into a salvo war against Sokka, and it's between Blink Stalkers, you can usually expect Sokke's micromanagement to be better. It was, you saw it, he lost very, very few stalkers indeed versus the firepower of Bling and Bling just crumpled at that point and that really was the end of him.